The last three years, I've been going to Panama, climbing trees and finding frogs. I've been doing the same stuff since I was a kid. I was counting frogs in my pond, climbing the trees in my backyard, um, and I've been really lucky to end up doing this Tarzan work for my PhD. I started my work looking for all the frog species I could find to understand where they live in the forest and how they go up and down across the seasons. One of my favourites is this species, Bristomantis crentus. Check this out. So, I've just been climbing up this really, really cool big tree. I'm about 23 meters up. It's daytime, it's really hot, and um, I've been doing a day survey, trying to find frogs. Normally, I wouldn't really expect to find frogs in the day up high, um, because they like to hide away. You know, they find these really tiny spaces where they crawl in, and uh, they protect themselves against the, the heat and the sun but I found a really cool frog and he's doing just that. Pristamantis crentus is one of the classic tree frogs that we find here. And uh, well, it's such a beauty. That was a female, it was quite big, really nice and sort of like fat and probably gravid with eggs. And they can lay their eggs on all sorts of wet substrates. So just if it has to be some wet moss or like under a leaf or something like that, they can lay them anywhere in the trees when it's wet because they have direct developing eggs. That means they lay their eggs inside the egg, the tadpole turns right into a frog, and then when it hatches out, boom, it's a frog already. It doesn't need to go into water, it doesn't need a pond or anything like that. And that is so beneficial for a, a frog which wants to live in the trees. And that's one of them, Pristamantis crentus. Knowing how species respond to changes in rainfall and temperature can help us understand how climate change will impact these communities. We found that frogs will climb down to the ground during the dry season. And we know that dry seasons will get longer and stronger due to climate change. Thus, these frogs living in the canopy will be forced down to the ground for longer periods of time, making it harder for them to reproduce and live. In 2017, I found a really cool species of poison frog on a climb. It's the yellow-bellied poison frog. And I decided to focus my research on it because it was just so awesome. Amazingly, we found that these frogs only like to live on one species of tree in our forest. The biggest and coolest one, of course, the Espervae. I've been going back to the same trees over and over again over the last few years, climbing them and finding frogs. We're here in the forest, climbing trees for frogs. And specifically, we're looking for some poison frogs, and not many people know anything about how they live and what they do in their spare time. So we're here looking for um, these tiny little frogs on these big trees. There's a big, big tree behind me. And when we're climbing, we're finding things like snakes, we're finding things like lizards, we're finding things like spiders, scorpions, everything that most people don't want to get in contact with, we're getting in contact with on a regular basis. Um, it's just part of the work and actually we kind of love it even though we get stung all the time but not by anything too bad <laughs> um, So we're climbing the Espervae tree. The Espervae is um, Anacardaceae, Anacardium excelsum. It's a wild cashew and it's such a great tree for these frogs because of so many reasons. It's, it's, it grows very fast and very, very big and its bark comes off in kind of papery lumps and the structure of its bark is such that epiphytes, other plants, can get rooted in the bark of the espervae and grow themselves above the, uh, in the canopy. So that's where all the little frogs like to live in and amongst all this vegetation growing on the branches. So we'll go and have a look and that's the project. I've just moved the ropes around and this, that and the other. I'm getting bitten by ants, I'm sweaty as hell, covered in bits of rotting wood and there are spiky vines and everything. But I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be coming back here to climb at night 
and that should be good fun. Who knows what I can find? There are so many other different species of frog that could live up here. Um, loads of other tree frogs and also we're right next to a lovely stream and that means we could definitely find one of maybe six or seven species of glass frogs that we have here. Um, and those are central enids. They, uh, you can see through their stomach, so that's how you know what they are. Uh, okay, well, I'm gonna go down now. So today we're in the forest and we're going to go and deliver some frogs back home. Um, I found a bunch of yellow frogs as well as two other species up in this massive, massive tree last night. And now I'm going to go take them home. We've collected their poops and we've collected some of their poisons and uh, now it's time for them to go back to their branches. So that's what you're going to see me doing. I've been going back to the same trees over and over again over the last few years. Sometimes I catch one that I've already met before. They have patterns like tiger stripes, so I know who's who. It's decided to rain quite a lot in the last couple of days, so um, it looks like the summer here is kind of turning. It's starting to get a little bit wetter. So January and March are the, the driest months, and we're in March at the moment and then it just starts raining more and more and more and uh, it peaks in November with something like 600 milliliters of rain so that's, that's a lot. In the end, we now know that our cool frog lives in little populations on individual trees. Think of each tree of an Espervé in the forest as an island within the forest with only the occasional movements between islands that are far apart. They eat different insects in these separate habitats, and those insects have chemicals in them, which the frogs put into their skin, and that makes them poisonous. Thus, by moving up and down, they collect a greater range of chemicals by eating different insects than if they'd stayed in one place. Our yellow frog relies on these huge trees with lots of epiphytes. If we want to save amazing species like this, we need to stop cutting down their habitat, especially the huge old trees, which provides the homes for specialized species like this one. Many thanks to everyone who's helped me along the way, and a special tribute to Heki Rasan, who was a great friend in Panama and made things possible.